Hey there, welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is Tom. So today we're going to have a little look at a uh, pro and con distro review. And I had to change the desktop environment in the distro review that we are going to look at today. Um, and I'll explain a little bit about why. So uh, without any further ado, we're going to transition over here and we are gonna have a look at Kororo. Uh, so Kororo is a, a system, it's like, um, it's based on Fedora. Um, only what they are, what I kind of look at them at like is kind of like the, the Linux Mint of Fedora. Um, of course, the Linux Mint platform, uh, it, which is my absolute favorite, it's what I'm recording this video on here, um, has a lot of the, the core functionality that, that I look for, including a lot of system tools, which, you know, you use more than you imagine, but um, driver tools, uh, uh, parting systems, USB writers, just all sorts of stuff that is available. And, you know, as, as you uh, noticed from my elementary OS uh, micro review, the pros and cons of it, of elementary OS, is there's like no system tools on it at all. And for me, that's kind of like, I really need more tools on my platforms. So I like Ubuntu and then it has a lot of tools, but I like the format of Linux Mint way better uh, than the Ubuntu platform. Uh, but this here, we're looking at uh, Kororo, and this is essentially kind of like, I'd call it like the Linux Mint of the Fedora group. So Fedora has a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of good information uh, inside of it, huge amounts of community support. Uh, it's a very good platform to use. One of the biggest challenges a lot of people have with Fedora, though, is that multimedia just does not work very well on it. It's very difficult uh, to get things working. Now, I, I believe in their latest update, they've made that a little bit easier. I have not had a chance to look at it yet. Um, but when I installed, uh, or I, I looked at, at Quora the first time, I was just kind of impressed with the amount of tools that it has, the fact that it's based on the on the stability of, uh, of the um, uh, Fedora background. Um, so I wanted to do a distro review, and actually I've been working on wanting to do this for a good week, uh, but I hit a few different complications, and that's probably the one of the negative ends. Now, the positive end of like Linux Mint and Ubuntu-based platforms, a lot of those, almost all of the Ubuntu-based or even Debian-based type platforms, when I install into a virtual machine, it can automatically go full screen. I don't really have to mess with guest editions. With Fedora, it messing with guest editions is, is a challenge, and every single time you do an update, it caused me issues. It's to the point where I don't even look at Fedora in my virtual boxes anymore. Um, it's just not a system I really want to mess with. Um, but looking at Kororo, it still does not have the guest editions. Maybe I could try and run the guest edition CD. I don't know if it's, it would work or not. Uh, I didn't even bother trying. Because the biggest uh, thing and, and uh, the biggest con that I've seen is being able to get a viable system where we can look at it. What I really wanted to do the review of is the GNOME version of Quoro. And this kind of brings me to one of the first cons is that I could not preview it in a virtual box. It does not load. The GNOME edition does not load. This is the Mate edition, which does load. Um, but I also attempted to install it on my thumb drive here, and I tried to install it side by side without wiping my OpenSUSE operating system on Enlightenment. Um, I could not get it to work. It'd be like, you need a UFI bootloader. Like, there is a UFI bootloader. It's like, it would not go. So short of actually erasing the whole disk, which I did not want to do, um, I was like, okay, um, we'll try different routes. So I booted off of a live key and then I tried to install various programs and I was able to install the programs much to my delight. Unlike uh, the Ubuntu packages, simple screen recorder is in the Fedora um, package archive, <laughs> but it doesn't work for GNOME 3. <laughs> so I could not go on a live key and then install simple screen recorder and actually record a video for you. That did not work. And so I kind of got into this method here. I just said, you know what? Um, 
I, I looked at Mate in addition to the GNOME, although I really like the GNOME better. I'll tell you that if I wanted to run a GNOME Linux platform, it would be Corora, um, or, uh, Corora on GNOME. That's exactly what I'd run. Out of the box, it looks beautiful. It's well, it's well optimized. Multimedia works. Packages are great. Just everything about it was just a fabulous system. So with this one here, uh, we're running on Mate. Once again, this is just a fabulous distro uh, based, of course, on Fedora. So if you um, if you are familiar with Fedora or you want to try Fedora out, uh, but you need a system that you can run multimedia on. Um, I did not put it on this machine, but I have done it in the past where I boot it into a live key. I transfer some audio and video and, and images on it. Everything works perfectly right out of the box. Now, one of the great things about this system here, if you can look at the web page that I have loaded there, is when you go to download it, you can actually choose whichever desktop uh, environment that you'd like. So here you can pick from 24 or 25. And 24 might load with GNOME. I think it's just 25 does not load in a virtual box with GNOME, but I wanted to look at the most recent. So you start with the version you want, and then you select your desktop environment. So there's KDE, Mate, Cinnamon, XFCE, and GNOME. And then you can choose to download via HTTP or a torrent. So you can download the individual information and then uh, grab your ISO image and then load from there. I loaded it onto my guy that I usually use for ISO images, and then I booted it into a couple of different computers. Very, very nice system. Like I said, I have downloaded Mate and I've downloaded GNOME. So the the Cororo information itself, the the website does have a lot of uh, a lot of really nice information, including some about the packages that you get. Uh, the majority of the packages are from the Fedora platform, uh, as you can see here. And then there's a couple of small individual packages that come from Corora and from RPM Fusion. So you have the uh, mostly the uh, package, uh, the packages found in Fedora, and then here you can um, you can have a look at uh, you know everything else that uh, that they've done. So check out their website; it's at CororaProject.org, and then you can grab your downloads. So onto the virtual box itself, um, I have left this mostly untouched. Um, I had changed the. Um, uh, I changed the, the background here just so that it says Mate. And um, everything else I've left pretty much the same. So uh, once again, going with the modern trends, I'm not big on the icons. Um, I don't like those, but this is Mate, so I could come up here into the control center, find the icons, and, and probably change those pretty quickly. And that's kind of the good thing about, about the Mate uh, system is, is how uh, customizable that the platform actually is. And I did not get a chance to actually come in and look at all this, but I'm guessing that, that it would not be a, a big challenge to do. So there's that. There's a darker theme. There's an arc. And you can see that it is changing the icons with it as, as, we, uh, as we do change things around here. Okay, well, I guess we're going to stick with that, which kind of gives me some newer modern looking art, um, icons that I like a little bit better, but keeps kind of the stylistic appearance, which I thought was was pretty nice. You can check out the other videos I have where I'm looking at, at the Mate desktop. Um, particularly, I believe I did one with Manjaro and Mate, so you can see how you can customize everything. I've walked through a lot of these hardware settings and such, uh, software, hardware, look and feel settings. But I want to have a look at what is inside the box here um, with Corora. So there is a lot of applications. I have not installed anything extra on here, so we can just have a quick look to see what is available. So here under accessories, you can see that there is a whole lot of information. So as I'd said, I really like it when uh, when you can um, when you can see the you know you have a system that has a, a lot of accessories, a lot of things in there that that can help you do your tasks. So here's a disk uh, capabilities. There's some font viewers, uh, calculators. So there's a lot of neat stuff in here. A couple other things that are unusual to find in here. Uh, we do have an uh, an own cloud desktop client. This is actually significant because I, I'm working on trying to get an own cloud uh, dist uh, installation working on my NAS system. Um, and someday I'll talk about my NAS system and particularly if I get one um, own cloud working on it, then uh, that'll be even cooler. 
Um, and then there's, let's see, there's a few other things here. Um, under your graphics, we have a lot of uh, a lot of programs installed. So we have uh, some image viewers. We actually have Inkscape installed by default. This is actually a little unusual. This is a open source vector program like Adobe Illustrator. And then of course we have GIMP. Um, LibreOffice, there's a color, what does the color selector do? Ooh, that's nice. This would be handy for me in my web design work where I have to constantly do colors. Actually on my Windows computer, um, I actually, anytime I need to mess with colors, I actually have to open up Photoshop. <laughs> so it's kind of nice. If I slide over here, the panel automatically slides, just an FYI, it automatically hides the panel if I get too close to it. So that's a very nice, uh, very nice application in the graphics. Oops. It's hard to, hard to get in there with the system here. Okay, so there is a simple scanner. I did not hook up any scanners or printers or anything. I think I actually have a network printer um, on my network right now. I don't keep them plugged in always, but uh, I'll test that out here and see if I can live install a printer. Um, some distros like the Brother printers. Some of them do not. I don't remember which one this is. Okay, so under internet, oh, we actually have a soft phone. That's fascinating. So we could actually use this distro as a uh, conversation tool. FileZilla by default is, is a little unusual, but that's kind of neat. I mean, that's for me, I always install it on my distros that I use. So that's a, a good bonus for me. Uh, Thunderbird and Transmission, if you are into torrent downloads, uh, there's a BitTorrent client. Under your office, we have access to the LibreOffice. We also have a dictionary. I'm not sure what project management is. That looks fascinating. And then we have um, our uh, PDF viewer there for document viewer. I'm going to load that package, the manager there, and see what that looks like. So I'm, I'm uh, looking for more uh, more solutions to um, uh, more solutions to change around, uh, kind of keep tracking of, of hours and stuff on, on larger projects I'm working on. That might be neat. Uh, sound and video. This is neat. We have a ripper, which is it, kind of irrelevant that this computer does not have a CD burner, but it's nice that it is there. Um, we also have audacity installed by default. Um, mm, uh, Desktop recorder looks like probably a um, uh, kind of like a simple screen recorder type thing. Handbrake is a little unusual. This allows you to rip uh, movies. So if you have a DVD collection, you can uh, digify your DVD collection with Handbrake. That's a neat program there. Um, okay, that's right. It's one of the, I was like, what is that one again? Okay, it's one of the video, one of the movie editors. I use... Um, uh, I use either Caden Live or OpenShot for my video editing. Uh, Pulse Audio Controller, Sound. We have a sound converter, so you can convert your audio files. I know some people, as they make the move to the open source community, they want to convert their MP3s to more of an open source platform, so this would allow you to do that. Um, I've never bothered uh, personally. Uh, we do have VLC by default, so that's a, a nice system. And then we have a CD and DVD burning application. So instead of installing Brasario, we get XF Burn, which kind of makes sense with the desktop. Under our system tools, we do have a lot of different tools. Uh, we can edit uh, configuration files. Uh, the Fedora Media Writer will be like a USB drive writer that I use on my Linux Mint a lot. I mean, that's just called USB Writer. Gparted is for looking at our drives. And then we can look at the, the disks. System monitor, this is nice to have um, um, a system monitor. Not all, not all distros have a good working uh, GUI system monitor. You can install HTOP to do that from the terminal, which actually works pretty well. Um, but this one does have that built in. And then of course, when you first load up the computer, you get your welcome screen, which uh, should load up here in a second, hopefully. Or maybe I didn't hit it. Or maybe I did hit it and it just doesn't want to load up. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. It loaded up twice there. I'm in a virtual box recording video, so that might make a difference. So here, when you first load the, the distro up, particularly in a live key or your first install, you get some basic information here. Not quite as much information as some of these welcome screens have, but this is, uh, is a nice handy tool if you're uh, new to the system and you need some, uh, some help with it. Okay, so 
up here in the uh, in the bar at the top, uh, as I'd said, I'd not changed any configuration settings around, and so everything is is exactly as it was. Here we have a calendar uh, and our time options. Here's our power indicators, our network, and our volume. So here we can control our volume up or down. We also have the nice dock over here, which contains uh, a lot of the applications you might want to use. You can uh, right-click and keep something in the dock if it's something new, or you can um, remove it from the dock. Here's your terminal. Then, of course, we have our desktop switcher down here at the bottom where you can switch between the different desktops. And then we have an option down here in the, uh, in the lower uh, left corner here, which will show or hide all of the windows open on the desktop. So that is just a, a little bit about this particular distro. Um, overall, um, this is a, a really nice distro. If I were wanting to run this, I would probably not run the Matei system. Um, this is one that I would definitely run the GNOME on. Um, another advantage of the GNOME platform, if you happen to be a person that uses a lot of your online accounts, is the GNOME uh, desktop environment has the ability to insert your online account so it will fully uh, integrate them into the system, such as like Facebook does on an iOS uh, platform or an Android platform. You can sign in in the settings of the phone and then it'll control that Facebook platform everywhere. Well, GNOME can have a similar functionality to that, uh, so that's a, a reason you might want to look at using that. Um, let me just see if there's any other things. Um, yeah, it kind of looks like that was about uh, about what I wanted to look at. Um, one of the downsides I saw in the GNOME version is I couldn't interact with the desktop, unlike uh, a regular Fedora where I believe I can. Well, I think I can. Well, maybe I can't. I can't remember. I don't use GNOME enough. Um, but I was not able to add folders or add files to the desktop, which is a big deal for me. I like to work off the desktop. Um, and I also, even if I went into the tweak tools and put the desktop icons on the system, it still would not allow you to put the desktop icons there. So that's kind of a, a little of the cons for me, but uh, for the average user, I'm not sure that'd be a, a real big deal. So overall, uh, again, this is Cororo. It is K-O-R-O-R-A is the name of it. CororoProject.org is their website. It's uh, a definitely a, a nice system. If you're looking for a platform that is based on Fedora, but you need it to look at your media files, or in my case of this computer behind me is a media PC, if you're looking for that type of functionality, this one would be a very first, uh, very first distro you might consider looking at. So anyway, uh, that is some pros and some cons of Kioro, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.